Well, Tom, could you explain to us how atheism complements the papacy, please? Well, it, it's interesting you would ask that question because the current Jesuit pope, uh, Francis I, has thrown open the door to the Roman of the Roman Catholic Church to atheists. You know, he regards all humanity, whether atheist, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, Satanist, anyone, it's just, it's just his brethren. <laughs> I, I want to make this point, and that is there is but one true God. God said, I am God, and there is none else. And if a man serve any but the God of the Bible, he's an atheist. Because the God that he serves is no God at all. Thus saith the Lord. So I've just broadened the term of atheism beyond the scope of the question that you asked me. But I will, I will tell you that historically, typically, since the Roman Catholic Church has taught for its entire existence that it is the one true church of Jesus Christ and there is no other church, and that if you wish to go to heaven, you must be a member of that church, baptized in that church, proselytized into that church, a card-carrying member of that church within the, 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 the umbrella of the papacy. You cannot go to heaven unless you are. The keys of heaven are not open to you. And if you are a Roman Catholic and you get discouraged by all of the sins of the Roman Catholic hierarchy, the priests, the nuns, the monks, the idolatry, the simony, the sodomy, the hypocrisy, the rank criminality, the global criminality, the historical and prophetic criminality of the papacy and the Roman Catholic Church and its dealings all over the world. If they grow incompatible with the inquisitions and the crusades against God's true Bible-believing Christians, and they fall out of favor with the Roman Catholic Church and never, uh, never again enter her doors, they resort to atheism because they've been, con they've been told from cradle to grave that if you're outside the Roman Catholic Church, there's no salvation for you. And they look at that option and the corruption of the Roman Catholic Church, the diabolical nature of the Roman Catholic Church, they, they choose atheism. And isn't it funny? They never gave Jesus a chance. They never in their whole lives ever gave Jesus a chance. And that's the hideous part of the Roman Catholic Church. It so indoctrinates its members that the Roman Catholic Church is the one holy Roman Catholic and apostolic church outside of which there is no salvation. And yet when they become disillusioned with that system of apostasy, that antichrist system, that synagogue of Satan, they choose atheism and choose to die like a dog. And that's the way that Protestantism is going today, to the degree that, that Protestantism is now accepting of the Roman Catholic Church and dares to call it Christianity, they too have renounced Christ. They've never given him a chance. They've repudiated what they once knew. It's the same sin that Israel committed. It's rebellion. It's a choice, and they made the wrong one. Well, thank you, and uh, can you explain why Pope Francis opens his arms to the atheists and how they work the left-right paradigm? Uh, I, I think I know where you're going with this. We talked about it the other day. Listen, Rome, historically, has has controlled the governments of the world. And this may seem 
foreign and unlikely to the listeners tonight. But Rome controls the government of the United States of America just like it controls all the governments of the world. And Rome has established a two political party, the, the Democrats and the Republicans. The Democrats represent Rome's social doctrine, socialism which is described by the motto of the church that goes like this, everything to the church and everything from the church. It's a global socialist collective where everything that we give in the form of taxes and service is, is given ultimately to the church. Now, who represents the church? It's the government. So, so we are taxed to death. Everything goes to the church, the government, which is the representative of the church. And then everything from the church, which is equivalent to saying everything from the government, since the government serves the church. That is a top-down socialist system. That is the social, the Roman Catholic social doctrine. It's embodied in Roman Catholic canon law. It's the historical Roman Catholic Church. That's how it operates. <clears throat> that's how it operated in the old world order during the Dark Ages, and that's how it's going to operate in the new Dark Ages. Everything to the church and everything from the church, which is just the same thing as saying since the state or the governments of the world serve the church, everything to the government and everything from the government. Now, the opposite of that is the, what appears to be the opposite of that is the right wing, the Republicans, or as described by many, the fascists. And that is the top-down hierarchical civil law structure. The power of the church is all supreme. And as the state represents the church, then the state becomes all-powerful to impose Roman Catholic canon law on the people through the civil laws of the land. And then to enforce it with blood, with the threat of blood. And we see all of our local police departments being militarized. They've got, they've got uh, dogs, German shepherds. They've got black uniforms, jack boots billy clubs, mace, tasers, uh, machine guns, uh, flashbangs, riot gear, uh, literally military equipment, uh, 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 tanks, armored personnel carriers and all. They're just the civil equivalent of the United States military. They're ready to impose their fascist, top-down, dictatorial, unforgiving uh, civil power upon the people take away our liberties and our rights, and go a traipsing off all over the world, fighting war to conquer the rest of the world for the Pope. They're saying they're going to do the same thing right here in the United States. <clears throat> you see, there are heretics that protest against the Roman Catholic Church all over the world. There's even heretics in this country that protest the Roman Catholic Church. And they're not going to be tolerated. They're going to be put down with brutal force. Now, there, appear, <clears throat> there appears to be, uh, uh, to the dubious, to the, 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 the uneducated Christians in this country, there appears to be a, a dialectic or an opposition between the left, the socialists, and the right, the fascists. But you see, I've just described they both work for the papal agenda. The papal agenda is both socialist and fascist. Social in its social policies, fascist in its authoritative uh, uh, realm. And so long as the people are caught rooting either for the left or the right, then their eyes are taken away from the the truth that there is no disharmony between left and right. They're both working on a papal agenda. You see, when the left, the socialists are in power, we get taxed more. When the right is in power, we lose more rights. And they both serve the papal agenda. 
And so when a person like I used to be who, who uh, spent all my time studying the particular political agenda that I favored and learned how to combat the opposite, then I was oblivious to the common goal of both which is a top-down Roman Catholic system, a papal system to the United States, which is another way of saying an anti-Protestant government, a counter-Reformation government. The Bible is not going to be tolerated. The law of the land will be Roman Catholic canon law, And you will not have free speech. You will not have freedom of conscience, freedom of religion. And the fascists are going to enforce it. And And the Democrats are going to exploit it. And all for the benefit of the papacy. And so, and so as long as we continue stuck in this delusion that there is truly an opposition between the left and the right, then we fail to peer behind the veil and see the Pope running both parties. And also, atheism, which professes no God at all, or literally are gods unto themselves making their own laws and their own righteousness, a lot of times they make the government their God. They consider the government their provider and their protector. The the left is their provider. The right is their protector. And the government becomes their God. And by extension, since the government is the servant of the papacy, the papacy is their God. And he's no God at all. The Bible calls him the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the little horn, the lawless one. And so, uh, you know, a fool says in his heart there is no God. Even an atheist has a God, and most of the time it's the government in whatever land they live. They just fail to realize that that government is just a proxy for the Pope, the Antichrist of the Bible. And, of course, an atheist doesn't want to hear about the Bible. They don't want to hear the truth, and they cannot comprehend that the government that they, that they worship and obey is literally the biggest religion in the world, Roman Catholicism. Atheists make excellent Catholics. They're obedient to their God, the government. And they're obedient, by extension, to the Pope. And so this Jesuit priest, Francis I, throwing open the doors of the Roman Catholic Church to atheists is a very strategic move by the Jesuit order. Because they know that all atheists ultimately worship the Pope. He's no God at all. He's the Antichrist. Antichrist. 